are under two weeks and six and a half hours, maybe, from the start of Penn State fall training camp. Fall camp gets underway next Friday, so now that we are close to the football season, we're going to be taking a look at 2021 today on the BWI Daily Edition. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr, and we're going to look at five players poised for a breakout season in 2021. Now, this list is going to be based on a couple of different factors, which include, but are not limited to, opportunity, uh, some statistical information provided by PFF, uh, a look at positional battles, and of course, things that make or break, including usage patterns, which are the primary driver when it comes to breakout seasons. Opportunity is necessary to make a lot of plays. Before we get into the episode, make sure you subscribe to where you get your podcasts and to our YouTube page. Leave a review, leave a comment. We are growing here at Blue White Illustrated, and we are making sure that you are covered for Penn State Fall Sports. So hit the subscribe button, and we'll get you all kinds of great information and all kinds of great content, including our recruiting show, uh, the BWI Daily Edition, and T. Frank's Film Room, and more to come. Okay, coming in at number five on our list of players poised for a breakout season, number five, linebacker Ellis Brooks. While all of the Penn State linebackers took a bath in terms of public perception last year, the guy that was the most consistent over time was in fact Brooks. Now, he uh, had some struggles in the middle of the season, but overall he was the team's best run defender and was in position more times than not when it comes to run defense. Now, Brooks is not a good coverage linebacker as of yet. He has not proven that, but as a run defender, he can provide a steady force on the middle of the defense with that being his primarily primary responsibility. The other part about this that I think is important is the fact that Jesse Lucada is possibly not playing linebacker in 2021 with his position, whether it's a hybrid role, a defensive end, true defensive end, or if he's playing linebacker, that is up in the air, which means there's more opportunity for Brooks to make plays before another linebacker, if another linebacker steps up to split roles at that Mike position. The most important thing, though, for Brooks is that he improved as a football player with 10 missed tackles last year, according to PFF, which is about 14% of his tackle attempts, which is just too high, especially if he's going to be a primary run stuffer as a linebacker. Now, with that being said, he is a smart, instinctive football player with good quickness, maybe not overwhelming speed or overt athleticism, but he does have the ability to be a solid run defender and a guy that is a dependable middle-of-the-field field general for your defense. With a year starting under his belt, some of the jitters out of the way, and maybe some of the guessing and a little bit of the overplaying things out of the way, Brooks heads into 2021 as a more mature starter who has the chance to be a breakout player. Coming in at number four on our list, wide receiver Keandre Lambert-Smith. Now, I had a whole thing uh, cooked up when it came to Parker Washington and Brenton Strange and the ability for Mike Yersich's offense to create space over the middle of the field and how those two players with their ability to break tackles over the middle can be big players in the offense. And that is all still true. But when I looked at why that was happening, and again, looking at PFF data over the last several years when it comes to the ability to get targets in Mike Yersich's offense, the primary target getters are boundary receivers. Now, Jahan Dotson already had his breakout performance in 2020. He's expected to lead the offense in 2021 and to have the primary bulk of the playmaking abilities on the offense perimeter. But when it comes to target shares over time, no tight end has finished in the top three in Mike Yersich's offense in terms of targets or yards. No slot receiver has finished within the top two when it comes to targets or yards. So that means that the number two boundary receiver is the other primary target, and Keandre Lambert-Smith is the guy who is in the lead for that position right now. He'll have to beat out Cam Sullivan Brown, and it is a big deal now because Keandre Lambert-Smith, it's much more that he has to have that breakout season as Lonnie White is expected to sign with the Pittsburgh Pirates this week and will not be playing football for Penn State. So that number two boundary receiver is incredibly important. Mike Yersich's offense creates the space over the middle by threatening the edges with hitches and screens and go balls. And the ability to spread the defense only is a valid thing 
if you have threats on the outside. Keandre Lambert-Smith has flashed that ability, especially in 2020, with the ability to make plays and to make yards after the catch, but he'll have to be more consistent, especially with drops and with making sure that he's in the right place running the right route to all the right depths and all of those things. But with a year under his belt again and not being a true freshman playing college football without any fall camp, it is reasonable to expect a step forward for Keandre Lambert-Smith, which could lead to his breakout season. Coming in at number three on our list of players poised for a breakout season, defensive end Adisa Isaac. And once again, players are driven with breakout seasons by the opportunity. And no player is more opportunity driven on this list than Adisa Isaac. Once again, he's flashed the ability over the years as a pass rusher with speed to get to the edge, but he's never had more than 100 pass rushing snaps in a season, according to PFF. Despite that, he has four sacks during that time and has flash that ability but for Penn State the time is now and the time he's had plenty of time to grow into his frame and to add as much muscle and maturity onto his frame as possible so Adisa Isaac now steps into that lead pass rushing role or at the very least a significant timeshare with transfer Arnold Ebikidi on the outside Adisa Isaac will have to prove that he is able to do that and able to uh, actually command pass rushing snaps because even though he wasn't given those snaps in the past, he didn't do anything to necessarily earn them, especially in 2020 when the opportunity for him to be that primary third pass rusher was there and he didn't quite take it and run with it in 2020. 2021 is his opportunity. But it's not just the number of opportunities that will increase for Adisa Isaac. It's likely the quality of the opportunity because we'll get to this in a minute, but Penn State's offense could not be worse in 2021 than it was in 2020. So more points equals more passing and more pressure on the opposing offense. More pra more passing means more quality pass rushing reps and areas where Adisa Isaac can shine. So all of that folds together for an opportunity-driven, potentially laden player to make a big impact and to take that step forward as a defensive end for the Nittany Lions. Adisa Isaac is that guy. Uh, but if he isn't, somebody's going to have to step up at that position. He's the most likely, and he's the best candidate heading into the season. Coming in at number two on our list of players poised for a breakout season, offensive lineman Juice Scruggs. Now, Scruggs almost broke out at the end of 2020, but there wasn't enough season left for him to really put impact performances in a consecutive order. Everyone's aware of his miraculous story from a horrific car accident to player to starter by the end of 2020. Now it will be about making more impact plays over time for Juice Scruggs. It also helps that Penn State switching their offense to a more outside zone-based system under Mike Yursich. That favors athletic offensive linemen who can run, get into space, and get to the second level. All of that describes Juice Scruggs perfectly. All of his memorable impact blocks from 2020 were all mobile blocks where he was downfield chasing down linebackers, safeties, getting on the perimeter, getting in front of the play, and running. He is literally and figuratively poised to be an impact player for the offense and the offensive line, which once again is poised for a breakout season as a unit. Him playing well is a large part of that in 2021, and he will have the opportunity to make those plays on top of the fact that this is pure speculation on my part, but James Franklin will want to maintain some of their primary uh, running concepts from 2020 and previous years that are more power and uh, counter based where you have more pulling offensive linemen. If that's the case, that is Scruggs forte. So he'll have plenty of positive opportunities to make plays in the Penn State running game. One area he will have to improve on is his consistency as a pass blocker because all of that athleticism, all of that movement skill just doesn't disappear when he's pass blocking, but the consistency in his technique and his ability to not lose badly and to not whiff will be very important so being able to improve as a pass blocker will make him a well-rounded player but as an impact run blocker he is on the verge of a big season coming in at number one on players poised for a breakout season that would be running back Kevon Lee the top player on our list and 
<laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I don't necessarily feel great about this particular player, and here's why. The position is correct. The player, as we all know, is completely up in the air because of the number of talented running backs at that position and the number of players that have tried to or have led the rushing attack for Penn State over the last two seasons. The reason Kevon Lee is here is because he's been the lead back at the end of last season and through spring ball. So he's the guy who's going to get the first crack at it. And if it's anything like 2020, he's going to be a consistent force and he will not lose ground to any other running back. I think another important thing to point out is he's a year older. This spring, he looked like a more confident, mature, and a little more explosive of a runner and that part is very important because the Mike Yersich offense as we just talked about with Juice Scruggs is much more mobile they're more athletic based they're more on the run with the outside zone system and because of that an interesting note again according to PFF over the last three seasons at Oklahoma State and in 2020 when he was the offensive coordinator at Texas Mike Yersich's offense has averaged 50 percent of their touchdown production on the perimeter of the offensive line from the tackle and outward so more outside runs more runs into space for the offense means more explosive runs which also does include the quarterback by the way on option plays so that's a part of this but the lead tailback typically has an opportunity to make big plays in space against backside runs cutback runs and more one cut explosive downfield runs than the traditional Penn State offense, which has been much more up the gut, which is less explosive, but a little bit more consistent. If you want to know per the perspective of this, over the last three seasons before Kirk Shiraka, Penn State averaged their touchdown production outside the tackles at just under 36%. So a big swing in where the runs are targeted for the Penn State offense. Now that would favor guys like Devin Ford or Keziah Holmes, who are more explosive, linear athletes and players that can make those big plays with their speed. But Devin Ford has yet to take that next step and be able to command a position in the offense. And Keziah Holmes, still a young player who is growing into his body and needs to learn to be more consistent and break more tackles. The wild cards in this obviously are John Lovett, the transfer from Baylor, and Noah Kane, who's looked great this offseason. He looks like he's training to be in the next Predator movie. Uh, he's looked great doing drills. But until we see him in contact or at the very least running in fall camp, we're going to put him as a bit of an unknown off to the side as far as players that are going to be a part of the Penn State running attack and guys that can lead the offense, which comes back to the guy that has been leading it this spring, was leading it last offseason, Kevon Lee. And by the way, you don't necessarily just need speed in order to break tackles and break big runs. Kevon Lee is able to break big runs. He's able to take the yards that are there and run over players in the secondary. And at the end of the day, that's what he needs to do. The offensive line needs to get him into the second level. If all of that happens, Kevon Lee is poised to have a breakout season for Penn State football and be the next tailback to lead the Nittany Lions. That's your list of five players who are poised for a breakout season in 2021. So we have our top five players poised for a breakout season. Uh, feel good about the list, but I just want to add some more context. And I want to mention, of course, the last player when it comes to the offense that everyone's going to talk about every single day until the start of the season. So we'll start with uh, the skill players that we mentioned in Keandre Lambert-Smith and Kevon Lee. Uh, when it comes to Lambert-Smith, we're looking at the data provided by history the evidence of the fact that no tight end no slot receiver has ever finished as one of the top two players in Mike Yersich's offense in terms of production that's obviously based on ideal systems and circumstances those that seems to be what Yersich wants to do and that's a good thing because there is data that shows that the targeting your boundary receivers is the most valuable use of your targets so those guys produce more yards they produce more first down Touchdowns, touchdowns and big plays so the boundary is where you should start but let's not forget that Kirk Shiraka we had this conversation last year that he had never had a tight end finish within the top three of the targets in the offense and despite the fact that he finished the season on the injured reserve uh, Pat Fryermuth was the lead target getter through the first four games of the season and finished third overall so you you work with what you have 
and you build a system around the talent. So the door is completely open for somebody like Brenton Strange or especially Parker Washington to make big plays. Parker Washington in particular could still have a huge season and not have the biggest breakout performance as compared to his classmate in Keandre Lambert-Smith. So some context there. The running back position, some of that production is going to come from the quarterback on those zone reads and those outside runs. That's where you get a lot of those runs for a quarterback where it's not necessarily up the middle where Penn State has done more power stuff in between the tackles with the quarterback with the numbers game and kind of their the way they run their RPO with an outside zone it puts the offensive player that on is on the backside of the run responsible to the defensive end so that guy one-on-one -on -one in space to the outside that is where a lot of those big plays come from, whether or not that is the running back or the quarterback with that responsibility to the backside of where the play is going, that running threat is the one who has an opportunity to create big plays in the running game. So it might not just be the running backs, it might also be players like uh, Sean Clifford. One area that I was thinking would be a bigger part with as much motion as Mike Yersich runs would be receivers on jet sweeps and pop passes and things like that. But that is actually pretty low on the list of uh, plays that he runs and targets that he gives out in that offense. Again, Parker Washington with the ability to break tackles, that strong lower body, almost a hybrid player when you look at his physical skill set. Maybe that becomes a part of the offense, but there is no evidence that it will be going forward. And then finally, we get to Sean Clifford. One thing concerns me the most about Sean Clifford in this offense, and this is going to determine a lot of what we just talked about. A lot of what Mike Yersich has done in the past are vertical routes down the field. And you have those threats to the outside where you have those big explosive plays with vertical routes and stressing the deep part of the secondary. That takes time. And that's not just on your offensive line to pass protect, which you feel a little bit better about that Phil Troutwine is going to have an offseason with his offensive line and a fall camp with his offensive line. But you've got to have a quarterback that can stand in the pocket, read, and deliver. And going over two and a half to three seconds has not been a strength of Mike Yer of Sean Clifford in the pocket. And that's a lot of what Mike Yersich has asked of his quarterback to stand in the pocket for a full play, which is typically between two and a half to three and a half seconds. Sean Clifford has been much better when he can see and deliver the football to either a predetermined or a one read and then get rid of the football. If he can take that step, and be a quarterback that can distribute the football down the field and open up this offense to its fullest potential, then he is the number one breakout player. My point is that I don't believe that's going to happen in year one. He can still be a productive player. He can still be a player that takes a step forward and helps the Nittany Lions win in his own way without being the driving force behind it. Maybe some of those deep passes don't always hit, but as long as he isn't causing negative plays and he isn't hurting the offense with turnovers, then he can be a productive part of this offense. So... I guess he is our bonus player on deep sleeper breakout candidates in 2021. Although, again, the evidence says that that's not necessarily going to be the case. Not to end on a down note, I think you should frame it more as he can still be good without being one of those players. That'll do it for today on the BWI Daily Edition. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Subscribe to our YouTube page so you get more information. Training camp is right around the corner. Don't miss anything, whether it's breaking news from camp, whether it's breaking news from commitments on the recruiting trail, or your favorite podcasts that are coming to the Blue White Illustrated YouTube page and wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe, leave a comment, leave a review, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.